Today in our 2012 Chevrolet Equinox, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Battery Charge Line Kit for towed vehicles. It's going to be part number RM-156-25. Our charge line kit is going to allow us to slowly trickle charge our battery while we're flat towing our Equinox. It's going to take that 12 volt power from the 7-way on the back of our RV and transfer it through the umbilical to the battery on our Equinox. Our charge line kit is going to protect our vehicle because it's going to have a circuit breaker only allowing a certain amount of power to go through to our battery. So we don't have to worry about overcharging our battery or any other kind of issues that may arise. The charge line kit is going to be a rather simple install. We're simply just going to have to put a breaker in place and run a few wires from the battery to the breaker and then from the breaker to the front where we have all of our electrical accessories mounted. So now that we've seen what it looks like, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to remove this panel right here because our wire is going to run down behind our headlight, down to the plug, and eventually come up to where our battery is up here. So you're going to want to grab a flathead screwdriver. And we're going to have a few push pins that we're going to have to remove. There's going to be a notch in them. If you come underneath the center section, pop it out, we can pull out the rest of the clip. We one towards the very front, then one right by the battery here, one towards the corner of the tail light on the outside. So we're going to lift up on this panel. You can actually just kind of rotate it out of the way for now, which will give us access to this area right here. Now I'm going to run an airline tube down, making it a little bit easier to get my wire through here. It's going to go down towards the front of the grill. So I can meet up where I'm going to mount my plug. Now if you don't have an airline tube, you can use a coat hanger or anything that's just going to keep its shape whenever you start pushing on it so we can get a nice clear path going to the grill. You just want to leave yourself a little bit up top so you can pull on it to bring it back up. So I did have to go underneath my vehicle and find my wire and then I passed it through to where my four pole wiring is coming out and my two prongs are where I'm going to mount my plug. I'm going to take my red wire from my charge line kit, put it inside my airline tube. I'm going to take some electrical tape and secure it. That way when I start pulling, I don't lose the wire. So I'm going to take my airline tube. I'm actually going to go underneath this support right here. And come back and bring it up through here, that way it's a more direct path. You have to reach down and grab your airline tube or coat hanger or whatever you're using, but it beats going over the top and having that panel on top of it. With our wire brought up to the top, we're going to find a spot to mount our breaker. Now another thing I want to mention is that it's going to have two different posts on there. One's going to be silver and one more of a copper colored post. They're going to be labeled, the silver is going to be auxiliary, and the copper is going to be labeled battery. Now typically you would think to hook the copper colored post labeled battery to the battery, but we're using it to charge our battery, so the red wire coming from the front of our vehicle is going to hook to the battery, and then the silver post is going to go to the battery on our Equinox. We're going to mount our breaker right here on the core support. Give us a nice solid piece of metal to go into. We'll take our self-tapping screw and a 5 16 nut driver and we'll go right into the core support. So make sure you leave yourself enough room that you can get the other self-tapping screw in on the other side. Leave that one a little loose so we can still turn our breaker over and put the other screw in place. So we'll take our wire, maybe give ourselves a little bit of slack just in case we need to make any kind of adjustments or tie anything up. We'll come to the copper post. We're going to cut our wire and make sure you hold on to that excess piece. We'll strip back the end. We'll take one of the small ring terminals in our kit and we'll crimp it onto the wire. And again, since this is going to be coming from the plug on the front, we'll take the nut, 
off the copper post. And we'll slide it onto the terminal and replace the nut. Now for the excess wire, we're going to strip it back and on one end crimp on another one of our small ring terminals. This one's going to be going on the silver post on the other side of our breaker. Slide it over and replace the nut. Now this wire is going to run over to the positive post of our battery. So I'm going to go ahead and move this cover out of the way. We're going to go ahead and pull the cover up so we can gain access to the positive post. This is also going to be our jump post. So just squeeze these two tabs, lift the cover, move it out of the way enough so we can get access to that post here. We'll estimate about how much we're going to need. Again, it's always a good idea to give yourself a little bit of extra. Trim the wire back. And we'll strip the end. This time we're going to take one of the larger ring terminals. We'll put it on the end of the wire and crimp it in place. Now I'm going to remove that post there so we can get our terminal in place. I'm going to grab a 10 millimeter socket. Loosen it up. We'll slide our ring terminal right over. And we'll just replace that. You want to make sure you put any kind of wires back that may have came off. We'll tighten it up and then we can put our fuse box back in place. With our wire and breaker in place, we can put all of our push pins back in. And you want to double check also the routing of your wire to make sure it's not going to rub on anything or come in contact with anything that may cause damage to it. But once everything's good, we can go down below and wire up the plug. We're going to have a set screw that's going to be on the top kind of corner. We're going to loosen that up and remove it. And you want to be careful because these are extremely easy to lose. We'll open up the door. And you can take that same screwdriver and we're just going to push the terminals out till they fall out. So now with the center section out, we're going to open the door on the plug. We're going to pass all our wires from the back. We're going to slide the plug as far back as we can so we have as much room to work with the wires as we can. Now in the back of the terminal, it's going to be extremely hard to see, but if we look very closely, they're all going to be labeled. We're going to have T for trailer marker, which will be our taillight signal, the brown wire. Next to that, we'll have a G for ground, which will be our white wire. L for left turn, the yellow wire. R for right turn, which will be our green wire. And then the center pin is going to get our red wire for our power. So now we're going to strip back each one of our wires. So we're going to start with our center pin. We're going to loosen up the set screw. You don't want to take these all the way out, you just want to loosen them up. And we'll take our red wire, we'll slide our wire into the terminal. And I always like to leave just a tiny, tiny bit of copper wire sticking out of the top. Not enough to where it would cause any kind of crossover connections, but that way you know that the connection is going to be good because it's metal to metal. And we don't have to worry about the insulation causing any kind of bad connections. And we'll tighten it up and we'll just go around repeating putting all the other wires in place. All of our connections made, we're going to open that door back up. But if you pay attention to the plug itself, we're going to have to line that hole up with the hole in the plug. And on the other side of the hole, there's going to be a little notch. And on the inside of the plug, there's a small notch that it's going to fit into. So it's only going to go in one way, but you want to try to get it as close as you can. And make sure that hole lines back up with the outside of our plug. Take that small screw, get it started, and we can tighten it back up. Now what I like to do, since there's no kind of rubber cover or anything back here, so I'm going to take some dielectric grease, 
I'm actually just going to fill this entire area up. And once that whole cavity is full, I'll seal it up with some electrical tape. And hopefully this will keep out any kind of moisture, debris, or anything else from getting inside those connections and causing a corrosion buildup. I'm just going to wrap all the wires as well with some electrical tape to kind of help protect the wires a little bit, but mainly to kind of hide them on the front of our vehicle. That way we don't have to see such brightly colored wires in the grill area. We'll just go as high as we can. We can tuck the excess back in there and we can mount our plug up. I'm using a self-tapping screw to go right into these two posts that's on my base plate. The kit doesn't come with these, but it is gonna be the easiest way to mount this up. So now the final step is to go ahead and test our circuits to make sure everything's working properly. If I put my taillights on, we can see that those are working, as well as my left turn signal, my brake lights, and my right turn signal. So all we have left to do now is hook up to our motor home and hit the road. And that'll finish up your look at the Roadmaster Battery Charge Line Kit for towed vehicles, part number RM-156-25 on our 2012 Chevrolet Equinox.